The certification of thermometers is important in blood banking as if refrigerators are too cold they can freeze blood and all the red cells can burst and hemolyze. Red cells contain various chemicals and are contained by the red cell membrane. If these cells burst, they release their contents which can kill if transfused into the patient. If the refrigerator is too warm, bacteria can reproduce and also hemolyze the blood. But bacteria can also cause the patient to develop blood poisoning. Many bacteria double their population every 10 minutes. If you only have one bacteria under the right temperature, in a little over three hours, it would have reproduced to be over a million bacteria. When checking to see if a unit of blood is compatible with a patient, chemicals are added to be mixed with the donor and patient samples. The reaction takes place best at body temperature, 37 degrees. A few degrees either way can mean the difference between life or death. Temperatures of incubators used for HIV testing are also quite critical. Many types of thermometers are available. I have found that the recording high-low thermometers can have a discrepancy as much as 5 degrees. Thermometers that are not etched but have their scales printed on wood or plastic often can be slid up and down changing their readings. There are thermometers that are pre-certified, but their costs are prohibitive. $80 each USD, and when the laboratory needs 50 to 100, the costs add up. You can purchase inexpensive thermometers for less than $5 each and certify them yourself. For refrigerators, all that is needed is what is called an ice point. Ice point works, as when ice turns to water, the temperature is constant. Don't worry about the physics, it's pretty simple once you see how it works. Ice water, as long as there is ice present and is being mixed, will always be at zero degrees. Now I know that is hard to believe as ice that comes out of the freezer is frozen and may be at a minus 18 degrees. However, if water is present, that water will be at zero degrees. The ice cubes will be below zero trying to cool the water but the water will remain at zero degrees. If the water was below zero degrees, it would not be water, it would be ice. This assumes that the water does not have salt in it. Salt will lower the freezing point of water and is often added to make brines which are used in ice rinks. The difference between ice and water is that ice is solid and water is liquid. When they change from one form to the other, it is called a phase change and something magical happens. When one gram of ice or one gram of water increases one degree to make one calorie of heat, think of it uh, as a calorie as a match. One match will raise the temperature of one gram of ice or water one degree. If you wanted to raise one gram of water from zero to degrees to a hundred degrees, you would burn 100 matches. However, at the magical point, the phase change to turn one gram of ice to one gram of water, it takes 80 calories or the burning of 80 matches. A sizable amount of energy needs to be expended to convert the ice to water. It even takes more energy for the next phase change to take place. That is to convert one gram of water to vapor or what is called steam. That requires 540 matches or 540 calories. This is why steam is used for trains. If you think of your body as a train, when you sweat, water is turning into vapor, and when this happens, the body has to give up 540 calories for each gram of sweat to evaporate. When it gives up this energy, your body cools. Enough talk of phase changes. Now let's get back to the certification of thermometers. Each thermometer should be assigned its own individual number or alpha code. I prefer using alpha codes as it condenses the writing on the thermometer. If a thermometer breaks, do not assign it its code to another thermometer. This will ensure traceability and trackability of thermometers.
Here is what you need to certify refrigerator thermometers. One, a beaker, for example, 500 ml. Two, water. Three, crushed ice. Four, thermometers to be certified. Five, thermometer logs. Six, white tape, tag, or marking pen. It is nice to have, but not necessary. One, an NIST thermometer, which can measure zero degrees. Two, a magnetic stirrer. Fill the beaker about one quarter to one half full of crushed ice and add water to about two to three centimeters from the top. The picture being shown uses a magnetic stirrer, which is ideal. If you don't have one of these, simply stir the ice mixture with a thermometer. You may, it may take five to ten minutes for the ice mixture to reach equilibrium or a steady state. A NIST thermometer can be used to check to see if the water is at zero degrees. Check each thermometer to be certified that its column has not separated. 